and I'm going in a sequence here. The very first column is G S E. The second column is S V E. And the third column is G V E. Don't bother about their full form. I'll tell you. And then we have afferent columns. The afferent columns to go like the afferent column is just like a mirror image. Like if this is G V E here, this will be G V A. Then for this S V E, this is S V A, the special visceral afferent. Then for this G S E, there is G S A. A is for afferent, but we have one additional column in the afferent, and that is called as the S S A, the special somatic afferent. Now I know many of you must be knowing about this concept. Many of you are not uh, probably ne never read about this, or maybe you mugged it up here. But I would say let's let's try to find out some tricks so that we can solve the questions here. Our purpose here is just to solve the questions here, guys. These are the seven columns that we have, right? Three efferent, four afferent, and that's the seven columns in total. And the sequence is important here. Now you'll be like, I cannot remember the sequence or anything like that. Doesn't matter. The first column and the last column. At least you can do that. You can remember the first and last column. The first column is G S E, that is general somatic efferent. And the last column is S S A that is special somatic afferent. This is general somatic efferent. That is general somatic efferent. And this column S S A it stands for the special somatic special somatic afferent. Special somatic afferent. The reason I wanted to remember the first and the last column is because usually the questions in the exam is about the parasympathetic nerves. It's usually about the parasympathetic nerves, guys. Parasympathetic cranial nerves is three, seven, nine, and ten. I hope you know this. If the question is about the parasympathetic cranial nerves, which nerves are parasympathetic cranial nerves? The parasympathetic cranial nerves are third nerve, seventh nerve, ninth nerve. And tenth nerve. So these are the four cranial nerves which are parasympathetic in nature. You know, parasympathetic in nature means these are the nerves which are going to supply some glands. They will go some, going to supply some smooth muscles. That's why we call them parasympathetic nerve. So it's oculomotor, facial, glossopharyngeal, and vagus. One trick here is that seven, nine, and ten. Seven, nine, and ten are having all the columns except first and last. S V E, G V E, G V A, S V A, and G S A, guys. All these columns, all these columns, they are related to the seventh nerve, to the ninth nerve, and to the tenth nerve also. Now, what is the reason behind that? We are not bothered as of now. Just don't forget don't forget about the reason. This is not the time to discuss that. Just remember, except the first column and the last column, all columns are related to third, seventh nerve, ninth nerve, and tenth nerve. If you get a question like which of the following column is usually the question is like this: which of the following column is not related to vagus nerve? Not related, consa guys. The first one is not related. The last one is not related. So usually the questions are like this only: that which of the column is not related. Even if they ask you which column are related to it, then you know except for G S E and S S A, any other column which is written in the option will be related to seventh nerve, ninth nerve, and tenth nerve. So from the questions point of view. This trick is really, really going to help you to fetch the answer to the question very, very quickly here, without much of an effort here. The only cranial nerve which I'm bothered about here is third. It's an important nerve. They do ask third nerve uh, uh, very uh, frequently. Third nerve column, guys, you have to remember it. Third nerve. We have two columns for third nerve. There are two columns for third nerve. One of the column for third nerve is G S E. That is the first column, the G S E, general somatic efferent, and another column. Is G V E because of Edinger Westphal nucleus. The G V E column is also there. So that's the only thing which I request you to remember or mug up from the parasympathetic nerve. Otherwise, don't bother about any other nerve or anything. Just think about these four nerves because hundred percent the question will be asked on these four nerves only. Three, seven, nine, ten. And the answer is simple. Seven, nine, and ten are having all the columns, whatever are whatever they are. Even if you don't know the name, doesn't matter. You should know which one is not there. The first is not there. The last is not there. For the third nerve, we just have to remember for third nerve. First column is there along with G V E. These two columns are there for the third nerve. 
So in the parasympathetic cranial nerves, you need to know about their columns and that's the only information that you need to keep in your head regarding the columns. Okay, <clears throat> now moving further from here, let's talk about the these parasympathetic nerves. Now these are parasympathetic nerve and they are related to parasympathetic ganglion. I just told you that parasympathetic ganglion are important guys. All the parasympathetic ganglion are important and for some of them, the relation is also important. So let's have a quick discussion on the parasympathetic ganglion. On the parasympathetic ganglion. Well, the first parasympathetic ganglion, let's say, uh, uh, the, there are four parasympathetic ganglion guys. So we have like ciliary ganglion, ciliary ganglion. Then we have a ganglion called as a pterygopalatine ganglion. I hope you'll be able to understand my handwriting. Pterygopalatine ganglion. Then there is otic ganglion. And then we have submandibular. The submandibular ganglion. So ciliary, pterygopalatine, otic, and submandibular ganglion here. Understand one thing about the ganglion. Every ganglion, all of these parasympathetic ganglion is related to some parasympathetic nerve. Either third nerve, seventh nerve, ninth nerve, and tenth nerve. So, if this is a parasympathetic ganglion, guys, if this is a parasympathetic ganglion, parasympathetic ganglion, so one of the nerve, guys, one of the parasympathetic nerve, like third nerve, maybe seventh nerve, maybe ninth nerve, not tenth for the head and neck, tenth uh, is, is not parasympathetic in the neck region. Any of these nerves will go, any of these nerves will go inside this ganglion and will relay there. That's the important thing here. Parasympathetic nerve are related to parasympathetic ganglion. So all these nerve, third nerve, seventh nerve, ninth nerve, they will reach the ganglion, otic, ciliary, whatever ganglion it is. They will go inside a ganglion and relay there. And once they relay there, once they relay there, their job is done. Khatam. There's no after you will not see the third nerve or seventh nerve coming out of the ganglion. No, no. From the ganglion, from the ganglion, the post ganglionic fiber which is reaching any certain gland or muscle or whatever. Let's say it is going to some gland or it is going to any smooth muscle, any gland or smooth muscle. This post ganglionic fiber, it has to be, has to be the branch of a trigeminal nerve. That's a rule guys. That is a rule for the parasympathetic ganglion that pre-ganglionic fibers, pre-ganglionic fibers are parasympathetic nerve. But post-ganglionic fiber, it is carried by some, some branch of trigeminal nerve. Now that branch could be anything, but trigeminal nerve will carry the uh, fibers from the ganglion to the gland here. You will never see facial nerve coming out of the ganglion. You will never see glossopharyngeal nerve coming out of the ganglion. It's always the trigeminal nerve branch which comes out of the ganglion and supplies the gland and smooth muscle. So keep this simple principle in your mind and it's very easy to remember all these ganglions here. Chalo, let's go with these ganglions guys. Okay. See, let me start with the first one here. There is a nucleus called as Edinger-Westphal nucleus. We all know that, right? Edinger-Westphal nucleus, which is present where? It is present in midbrain. Edinger-Westphal nucleus is present in the midbrain. So from this Edinger-Westphal nucleus, what you will see, a preganglionic nerve will start and will reach a ciliary ganglion. And from ciliary ganglion, some nerves will come out which will reach the smooth muscles and gland. Now, as I already told you guys, first of all, what is this ganglion here? This ganglion is ciliary ganglion. This is a ciliary ganglion. So the preganglionic nerve for the ciliary ganglion is third nerve. It has to be either third nerve, seventh nerve, ninth nerve, or tenth nerve. For the ciliary ganglion, preganglionic nerve, the nerve which reaches the ganglion is third nerve. Post ganglionic nerve are the branches which are directly coming out of the ganglion and these are called as short ciliary nerves. All these nerves are short ciliary nerves. These are all short ciliary nerves and these short ciliary nerves are going to supply what muscle? They are going to supply the sphincter pupillae. They are supplying sphincter pupillae and ciliaris muscle. Sphincter pupillae and ciliaris muscle. 
But there's a lot of information in this here. Just just look, pay attention to everything. First of all, Edinger Westphal nucleus, number one. Where it is present? It is present in midbrain. Edinger Westphal nucleus gives off the preganglionic fiber that is be above uh, before the ganglion. So, what is the preganglionic nerve here? The third nerve is a preganglionic nerve here. Then relay in the ganglion, and from the ciliary ganglion, there are many short ciliary nerves coming out, and those short ciliary nerves are going to supply these muscles. Which muscles? Sphincter pupillae and ciliaris muscle, the smooth muscles which are supplied by the Edinger Westphal. So that's the story behind the ciliary ganglion here, right? From the relation point of view, one thing that you should know about the ciliary ganglion is that guys, ciliary ganglion is situated between the optic nerve and lateral rectus. If I just draw it very small here, guys, let us say this is an orbit. If this is a transfer section of an orbit here, here is the eyeball and that is the optic nerve. There is an eyeball here, right? And that is the optic nerve and this muscle here is lateral rectus. So location of ciliary ganglion is somewhere here. It is between the two. So you can see this is ciliary ganglion. I'm writing CG for ciliary ganglion. And as you can see, it is situated between two things. What are the two things here? On the medial side of the ciliary ganglion is the optic nerve. That's the second nerve you're looking at. That's optic nerve is there. And on the lateral side of the ganglion is the lateral rectus muscle. So it's important information here that ciliary ganglion is sandwiched between it is present between the third uh, second nerve i'm sorry optic nerve and the lateral lectus it is between the optic nerve and lateral lectus muscle in the sequence if i go next here there's a nucleus called as superior salivatory nucleus Superior salivatory nucleus, guys. Superior salivatory nucleus is present in pons. First thing. Superior salivatory nucleus is present in pons. Now, from this superior salivatory nucleus, the preganglionary nerve for two ganglions will come out. It's not one ganglion. There are two ganglion for which the superior salivatory nucleus will give the fibers to. The preganglionic fiber. Guys, preganglionic fiber. One of the preganglionic fiber coming from superior salivatory nucleus is going to go into the ganglion that is pterygopalatine ganglion. I'm writing PPG that is pterygopalatine ganglion. That is through which nerve? Through the facial nerve only. And to be more precise, which branch of facial nerve? It's the greater petrosal nerve. So it's the greater petrosal nerve branch of facial nerve which will go and relay into which ganglion? Pterygopalatine ganglion. It is in the pterygopalatine fossa. There is another branch <coughs> of facial nerve. Again, facial nerve only. Preganglion nerve will be facial. Another branch of facial nerve, and this time this branch of facial nerve is corda tympani. Is corda tympani nerve. This is going to carry the preganglionic fibers, preganglionic fibers for submandibular ganglion. For the submandibular ganglion. So, guys, nucleus is what? Superior salivatory nucleus. Location is where? Pons. What is the nerve? What is the parasympathetic nerve for this? The facial nerve. The two different branches of facial nerve. Greater petrosal nerve and corda tympani. Greater petrosal nerve is going to relay in which ganglion? Pterygopalatine ganglion. And corda tympani fibers are going to relay in submandibular ganglion. So obviously the post ganglionic fiber will, going to, will, going to, will go and supply some gland here. The post ganglionic fiber from pterygopalatine ganglion will use the branches of maxillary nerve and even the branches of ophthalmic nerve. It uses the branches of a maxillary nerve, branches of ophthalmic nerve to reach the lacrimal gland. The branches are not important. The important thing is where it is reaching guys. I already told you that post ganglionic fibers, whatever post ganglionic fibers that you will see, which is after the ganglion, it has to be the branch of trigeminal nerve here. So maxillary nerve and then after maxillary nerve, it also use some branches of ophthalmic nerve also to reach the lacrimal gland. Whereas corda tympani is using the branch of mandibular nerve. And to be more precise, that branch of mandibular nerve which, it is, which is used by the corda tympani is the lingual. The lingual nerve is a branch of mandibular nerve and it is using that lingual nerve to reach what gland? It is using it to reach the submandibular and not only submandibular, sublingual gland also. 
सब मैंडुलर एंड सब लिंगुल ग्लैंड एज वेल दैट्स द स्टोरी अबाउट द टेरिगोपेलेटन गैंगलियन एंड दिस इज सब मैंडुलर गैंगलियन द टेरिगोपेलेटन एंड सब मैंडुलर गैंगलियन सो एज आई सेड ना द लॉट ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन हियर विच न्यूक्लियस वेर इट इज कमिंग फ्रॉम विच पार्ट ऑफ ब्रेन स्टेम वॉट इज अ प्री गैंगलियोनिक नर्व which ganglion it will go into what is the post ganglionic nerve what it is going to supply and this is all very very important guys you when you'll start when you look at the previous year questions you'll find the questions like these which of the following is true about innervation of this gland innervation of that gland innervation of this smooth muscle so you have questions on that part here so now i can say facial nerve facial nerve is actually connected to two ganglion pterygopalatine ganglion also and submandibular ganglion also let's go further and finally to the last ganglion that is otic ganglion guys for that the nucleus which is required is inferior salivary nucleus inferior salivary nucleus now the location of inferior salivary nucleus is also in pons just like superior salivary even inferior salivary nucleus is present in pons from the inferior salivary nucleus the preganglionic nerve the preganglionic nerve which is going to reach the otic ganglion which is going to reach the otic ganglion is the branch of glossopharyngeal nerve and to be more precise that nerve is lesser petrosal nerve previously it was greater petrosal nerve for the facial it is lesser petrosal nerve branch of glossopharyngeal and from the otic ganglion from the otic ganglion the post ganglionic fiber obviously post ganglionic fiber will go through trigeminal so it will go through the mandibular nerve and this time the branch of mandibular nerve is auriculo temporal nerve guys at and i'm writing auriculo temporal nerve auriculo temporal nerve and that is going to supply what gland the parotid gland that is going to supply the parotid gland so this time the preganglionic nerve is glossopharyngeal nerve and the branch is lesser petrosal the ganglion they are relaying in is the otic ganglion and the post ganglionic fibers are going again through mandibular nerve more precisely you can say auriculo temporal nerve which is going to supply the the gland is parotid gland here so that's how we saw the parasympathetic innervation of all the major glands here lacrimal parotid submandibular sublingual all these glands are done and in fact the sphincter pupil and ciliaris muscle also which is by the edinger westphal here so for all the ganglion guys you should know their preganglionic fiber which gland they are supplying which nucleus they are related to so this is this is all important in this here for the otic ganglion just to keep the relation simple here just like <clears throat> just like ciliary ganglion was between the optic nerve and lateral rectus otic ganglion is between also between a nerve and a muscle a nerve and a muscle now this nerve is mandibular nerve muscle i'm talking about the ganglion is like this ganglion is medial to the mandibular nerve trunk of mandibular nerve that is ganglion guys look at this that that's the otic ganglion medial to mandibular nerve and more medial to ganglion more medial to ganglion is the muscle that muscle is tensor velli palatini here tensor velli palatini that's one thing i can say so mandibular nerve is basically present lateral to the ganglion and tensor velli palatini is present medial to this otic ganglion here so again it is present between a nerve and a muscle ciliary ganglion just just look back guys ciliary ganglion if i just take you back for one second you can see ciliary ganglion is present between a nerve and a muscle nerve was medial muscle was lateral nerve was medial muscle was lateral here it is opposite otic ganglion is again between nerve and muscle this time the nerve is lateral and the muscle is medial so if this is my nerve my otic ganglion is on the medial side here right so nerve is lateral and the muscle is medial it's opposite so this is a little discussion on the parasympathetic ganglion and the parasympathetic column here